What's going on everybody? James Hancock here. I'm back to offer my spoiler-free review for The Legend of Vox Machina coming your way on January 29th on Amazon where it has already been renewed for a season two. The first season is going to be 12 episodes total, but I only had access to the first six episodes through my press screener, but those were more than enough for me to make my mind that there are some folks out there who are absolutely going to adore this show. I really enjoyed it, in particular the first three episodes, but this show wasn't necessarily made for me. The people the show was made for are the millions of fans out there who already love and adore creator Matt Mercer and his D&D web series, Critical Role, in particular, the early days of Critical Role, which is the inspiration for many of the story arcs in this season and beyond. But the show is light, fast-paced, full of raunchy humor, violence, and nudity, and I rapidly fell in love with several characters. And with each new episode, I was always eagerly looking forward to the title sequence, where all the characters are depicted in the most epic fashion possible. The best compliment I can offer for this show is that if you're a tabletop gamer, each episode's going to seriously give you the itch to get your friends together for some hardcore gaming, and if you're a dungeon master, It'll make you wonder what ways you can make your sessions even more enjoyable for your players. So in general, while I would much prefer to play D&D personally than to watch the folks at Critical Role do their thing, no matter how enjoyable the Hand of Vecna moment with Joe Manganiello might have been, I have to give credit where credit's due and applaud the way that their crew has invited this giant new audience into the hobby of tabletop gaming, and now they've taken their work to the next level with a very entertaining animated series. But if you're wondering what the hell Critical Role is, let me pause for a moment and tell you about Matt Mercer, who's one of the lucky few gamers out there who found a way to turn his passion for tabletop RPGs into basically a media empire where he and his fellow voice actors get together for a few hours at a time to play D&D on Twitch and YouTube, and millions of viewers have been eating it up for years. So much so, there's now an ongoing discussion amongst tabletop gamers about the Matt Mercer effect where new D&D players sitting down for their first gaming session are often frustrated to learn that not everyone out there is capable of delivering Matt Mercer's production value or that they don't necessarily play in a similar style. Depending upon who's sitting around a table and what game is being played, every session out there is completely different with its own unique style and flavor. Speaking from my own experience, I first got involved with Dungeons and Dragons in the early 80s when my older brother and his friends learned how to play at camp. And this was the time of the first animated show, which launched when I was around seven. Hey, look! The Dungeons and Dragons ride! And I rapidly became obsessed with what is now described as first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And over the years, I was always first in line for new developments like the Dragonlance campaign setting, especially the novels, as well as some of the earliest D&D computer games. And by age 12, I was a dungeon master running games and continued to do so well into my 20s. I then took a long break from the game, apart from some time spent on computer game franchises like Baldur's Gate. And speaking of Baldur's Gate, there's at least one classic sound effect from that game that's made its way into this new show. But I officially stepped back into this world in 2021 when I ran a 5th edition campaign throughout most of that year, which eventually reached its conclusion when we reached the end of Tales from the Yawning Portal and ran the legendary module Tomb of Horrors. But this year I'm really excited to be running a 1st edition campaign, revisiting some of the most popular modules ever written. So now that I've officially outed myself as someone who's invested a ton of time into this shit, let's get back to my spoiler-free review of this show, starting with the animation, handled by Titmouse, which has been involved in dozens of animated shows over the years. On first glance, I wasn't that impressed with the animation style, but I have to admit that the animation really comes to life during the combat sequences where the members of Vox Machina are showing off their skills and their ability to work as a team. And there are heartbreakingly few movies and shows out there that manage to capture details of a specific gaming experience, but this is one area where the show really shines. It's not excessive on this front, but the show fully embraces the distinctive classes in Dungeons and Dragons like bards, rogues, barbarians, druids, etc. In particular, their unique class skills like checking for traps or searching for secret doors. But not to worry, casual viewers will not be put off or distracted by this. You don't have to be a gamer to understand the fun and watching a barbarian hacking a room full of people into small gory pieces. You're hurt. No big question. This is normal. Oh, oh no. Ugh. And I was relieved to find that this show embraces the casual attitude most players have towards being bloodthirsty mercenaries. Most adventures in D&D involve being paid to go out and kill a bunch of people. And every once in a while you'll find a player who wants to roleplay their good alignment. 
but most players out there just want to level up, find loot, get more powerful, and basically do all the crazy shit that might be frowned upon in real life. But just to be fair, I do have a few criticisms, nothing major, but I should mention that this flavor of fantasy and this approach to D&D will not appeal equally to every fan. This is a style of high fantasy where the characters much more closely resemble superheroes who are completely incapable of dying, which is a common complaint a lot of gamers have with 5th edition D&D. But while the central characters might enjoy impenetrable plot armor, that does not hold true for all their friends and allies that they make along the way, who often die in such gruesome fashion, you can't help but crack up at the over-the-top nature of the carnage. But if you're looking for savage swords and sorcery, you should probably check out last year's animated film, The Spine of Night, instead. But getting back to this show, one of my little nitpicky criticisms would be that the story really drags with these lengthy, touchy-feely scenes that don't all quite work. And while I happily rip through the first six episodes all in one sitting, not all episodes are created equal. And depending upon one's taste in music, there are times where the tunes performed by the bard Scanlan might make you want to rip your ears completely off your head. That said, I love that character who never misses a chance to dive headfirst into the nearest brothel, resulting in some very kinky, revealing hijinks. The animation in the show might look kid-friendly, and there's definitely a kid-friendly tone. However, there are multiple scenes that kind of sort of drift almost into, like, softcore porn territory, and I was not complaining. But on the whole, I was having way too much fun with this show to worry about any of my gripes all that much. I love the constant inside references to things like murder hobos or never splitting up the party, little details which gamers will absolutely love and appreciate, or hysterical situations like when one member of their party after another fails to pick a lock, a scenario that every D&D player can appreciate. And the scripts for the episodes tend to be very punchy, delivering one great comedic line after another, many of which are seriously raunchy that had me howling throughout, but in the end, what makes makes this show endearing is the cast. Now this show employs a lot of phenomenal voice acting talent, but my favorite of the bunch is probably Laura Bailey, who plays the character Vex, a half-elf ranger. She just hurls herself into the character in ways that I just find delightful. But if I really had to make a case for this show, I would point to episode 3, which introduces the Briarwood arc from the original web series. This episode truly goes to the dark side with both the villains and the heroes, and after watching it, I knew I'd be on board for all 12 episodes, and probably season 2 as well. So there it is. High five to Matt Mercer and all his friends. As a gamer, I have to admit, I'm a little jealous that they get to do this for a living, but I'll be curious to see how non-D&D fans respond to the show as it rolls out. Critical Role is viewers who don't play, so I wouldn't be surprised if the same holds true for this show. But I've said all I need to for now. If you like this review, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching, but more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.